So we'll just continue from where we left. We will have the others joining us soon. So we said that we are in the city of uh, Lystra right now, where Paul and Barnabas are ministering. And very similar to Peter and John, they have uh, seen uh, the miraculous restoration of a man who was crippled from birth. And he stood up on his feet. Uh, and the specific reason why this person received this restoration is because of the faith which he had. Okay, So we know Jesus uh, talked about faith and he said, according to your faith. So this person had faith. Um, uh, we could also say that, you know, Paul discerned and uh, this miracle took place, amazing miracle took place. So when it happened, the people, we are told, they saw what happened and they were just amazed. Obviously, uh, uh, someone who's never walked their entire lifetime, one is that person and his family being amazed, but people around also being very, very amazed by this. Uh, so he leaped and, uh, okay, and uh, the people, they were so impressed, we are told, that in their own language, and it's called the Lyconian language, they are praising. They are praising uh, Paul and Barnabas and they are saying the gods have come down to us in the likeness of men. So uh, people speak in their own language. It shows that uh, they are um, giving credit okay, and, and appreciation, words of appreciation. So they are uh, really happy with Paul and Barnabas and the miracle that has taken place. So, you know, they are, they are just uh, rejoicing over the miracle and Paul and Barnabas. And what are they saying? They're saying the gods have come down to us in the likeness of men. So in their culture, okay, and in the philosophy, philosophy, uh, Greek philosophy, uh, they would have gods coming down to the earth. And there were many gods. So they thought maybe Okay, there was a network issue. Uh, apologies. Uh, so I was saying that people are getting ready to worship uh, these two men, thinking that they are gods. So Paul and Barnabas, it is uh, likely that they didn't understand because they were being praised in the Lyconian language. So when people were saying things, they had no idea what was going to happen. But it's only later when they saw that uh, oxen are being brought, garlands are being brought. What is going on? Uh, they realize that these people think we are gods. So what is the reaction? You remember even Peter. Peter was greatly honored, greatly honored. And then when people were looking at Peter and John, he says to the people, why are you looking at us? This man was healed because of the power in the name of Jesus. So we are not the people who have done anything great. Okay. So uh, even when that 
miracle happened the normal rest the people is they will look at the people look at the ministers here also and the crippled man is healed they are thinking oh gods you know, zeus and hermes are here let us people you know it's a big lesson for us who are serving god from time to time you know our ministry goes well definitely there are times when ministry also does not go great you know you go and you only get opposition in a certain place but at times when things go well and um, particular and notable miracles happen what happens to people they look at us and so impressed they say oh pastor you know great you know you are anointed and uh, people will start giving us attention people will start giving us admiration adoration and to the extent here these are unbelievers they that paul and barnabas are gods to that level okay that they want to sacrifice for them so the admiration of people how to deal with the admiration of people you know we have to be very clear that we are just whom god is using yes the bible says that we honor those who are ministers especially those who are teaching god's word who are dealing with the word of god but that's about it there is that honor which is due for them we should not elevate to the position of god and what if we get that response from people you know we should be very careful because god's glory does not belong to man okay and we've studied the kingdom builders that we cannot take god's glory we should give god his glory because only he deserves it who did this miracle the power of god the holy spirit who is working through paul and barnabas did the miracle remember we said acts of the apostles is actually the acts of the holy spirit through the apostles so paul and barnabas are very clear we are not gods or anything we are people just like you even peter and john said that why are you looking at us come on nothing special about us if you believe even this power can flow through you okay so we have to be very clear on that otherwise if we are not clear people will start treating us like gods that is wrong we should not take that kind of admiration so both both of these people verse 14 it says when the apostles barnabas and paul you know till now we were talking about the 12 apostles obviously um it's 11 because judas uh went away from god but matthias was chosen so 12 apostles were the leaders of the church now in acts 14 14 for the first time you see this we are calling paul and barnabas as apostles and paul and barnabas they heard that the people want to worship them what did they do we are told that they tore their clothes and ran in among the multitude crying out and saying men who are doing these things we also are men with the same as you and preach to you that you should turn from these useless things to the living god who made the heaven the earth the sea and all things that are in them so what are they doing you know tore their clothes tore their clothes uh, it, it, it's it's a sign of showing your disgust for blasphemy okay blasphemy is going against god so how can man be called as god that is blasphemy so that is the reason they are express their, um you know they their uh, uh, ang disgust and they are saying don't do this don't do this uh, we are just people human beings like you but you must turn what from all these practices of worshiping people you know and all kinds of teachings that you have turn from all this to the living god and they are introducing the living god as a creator they are saying he made the heaven the earth the sea all things that are in them okay uh, and they continue to you talk to the people in their own whatever the people understand so in that culture greek culture they knew that god had created you know gods had created so they are trying to tell the people look there is only one god he is a living god and he is the creator uh, and then they continue to add to it and they say mm, uh, who is 
who in bygone generations allowed all nations to walk in their own ways nevertheless he did not leave himself without witness in that he did good gave us rain from the heaven and fruitful seasons filling our hearts with food and gladness so the people understood that the job or the work of god is also to bless people so they knew see basically uh, paul and barnabas are talking in their with their understanding and they're saying you believe that god is a god who does good things for the people so let us tell you that this god this living god whom we are preaching he's one god he is the creator and he is the one who does good good in the life of the people right uh, he gives rain he gives good seasons fruitful seasons when uh, you sow in in your fields and he fills our hearts with food and with gladness so he is a good god who brings blessing on our lives so you put your faith in this god okay but even when they were talking sense to the people you know we read that the people were not willing you know it 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 is like um it's so sad uh, you remember aaron uh, when moses went to worship god and uh, when he came back he saw that the people had forced him uh, to get jewelry mold it in middle uh, of a calf and worship so people had a mindset of their own and they were just not willing to listen uh, they just wanted to do what they wanted to do okay we want to worship okay and here are paul and barnabas they are telling them no please don't do this but what are these uh, these um, admirers of paul and barnabas doing they are not ready they want to make the sacrifices okay so then what happens then the jews from antioch and iconium came there so all this is going on but did the jews who oppose them in the other cities from where they got expelled from antioch and iconium you know they had to flee they had to run away because those jews had made up their minds we are going to stone these people so they coming to lystra they must have heard you know what these people have gone to lystra and there they have done this miracle also and now the whole the whole region uh, you know lyconium the whole region uh, they are praising paul and barnabas and they want to make sacrifices so these jews would have been upset they would have thought okay wait let us teach them a lesson we'll go there uh, we'll tell them uh, you know that these are not uh, good people or the their doctrine is not true and we are going to kill them so they go there So, and they try to uh, persuade the multitudes meaning again you remember boys in the minds of the gentiles is what we read earlier so here also they come with all their talks and with all their uh, rumors and they try to uh, convince them don't believe don't believe and then you know they take the step to actually stone paul they drag him out of the city have you seen this happen somebody being dragged out of the city and being stoned earlier anybody was dragged and stoned stephen yeah very good very good yeah that's true so see whenever they wanted to kill someone apparently stoning was a sure shot way they could stone and generally the person would die so the jews have made up their minds we are going to kill these people and they would do it outside the city and that is why they are dragging paul outside the city Uh, of lystra and there they take him uh, and they stone paul what happened to barnabas you know, we don't read much whether they spared barnabas uh, and they only took paul but what is happening to paul you remember we we read at the end uh, of um, stephen being stoned that the clothes were brought and they were put at the feet of saul so in a sense history is repeating itself what paul had done to stephen it's happening to him now okay i don't know what thoughts went through paul's mind at that time but that same man who was the chief in charge of the execution of stephen is now being stoned outside the city okay uh, and when they stoned him we are told that you know uh, they left him 
because whenever the crowd stones somebody and that person is dead they leave so they leave him uh, they stone him sorry and then they drag him outside the city supposing him to be dead so yeah they stoned him and then they uh, took him outside the city and they left him so we are told that sub him to be dead now again it's not clear whether he was dead some people say that uh was dead you know and he did um, rise from the dead some say things like that but then uh, others say that uh, no it wasn't him dying but he would have been severely injured but whatever the case whatever the case okay either or he severely injured what happens verse 20 however when the disciples gathered around him so the disciples would have heard check out paul they've thrown him outside the city so they've all gone there and they gathered around him so our assumption what do the disciples generally do in a situation any difficult situation what have we seen the disciples doing when uh, um, paul and uh, peter and john were threatened they prayed when peter was in prison they prayed right now paul is beaten what can we expect they gather around him meaning most likely simply they won't gather they would have prayed for paul would have laid hands on paul we don't know what are all the things that they have done but they would have ministered their faith so they gather around him and the next thing that we see here is he rose up now you you think with me can a person who has been hit and the stoning in those days we are not talking like small stone boulders they can hit the person they have checked the person supposing him to be dead that means he was severely injured at the at the least but when the disciples gather around him can we call this divine healing can we call this you know divine restoration can we call this resurrection from the dead i think so we can call you know uh, we don't know exactly what happened but one thing we know that god's power strengthened paul's body god's power strengthened paul's body and once the disciples have ministered faith he rose up okay does he need 10 more days of bed rest paul or what what is the um situation going to be we see that he went into the city how bold he just went back into the city okay amazing and the next day he departed with barnabas to the the derby yeah derby so he departed from there so maybe you know he went into the city to kind of pick up his things and also barnabas would have been in the city um so he went there and uh, he made a decision okay fine this has reached the limits they've already harmed me and i have recovered uh, how about we go to the next place maybe our time here is over so from iconium so iconium what are all the things that take place iconium you know some believe some don't believe then uh, you have a miracle that uh, oh yeah iconium a uh, left some believe some don't believe and then uh, these people had to leave they fled because of the opposition okay then they came to lystra uh, in lystra what happened lystra there was a miracle took place then um, they want the people wanted ship uh, paul and barnabas uh, and make sacrifices but paul and barnabas did not agree and when they did not agree and one more thing you notice here about the crowds you know i've i've shared this also that you know um, when people appreciate us it's helpful it's very encouraging you know it feels good uh, okay some my whatever ministry i'm doing yeah it is in people's lives that's good but if we depend okay on the appreciation people it's very dangerous because see these people in lystra at one point they have want to make sacrifice and worship and on paul and barnabas they are saying you are gods 
second uh, uh, instance what are they doing stop paul throw him out of the city so the people's appreciation you know it is it is like a role stuff can we can we be stable sit on you know a roller coaster no you're being being taken down you know physically emotionally it's up and down you you'll be all over the place so for us as believers and ministers of god you know we have to depend how jesus also said my honor comes from god you people honor each other but my honor comes from god so we do receive if someone appreciates for we are encouraged by it praise god thank you jesus for that but it's not like our life depends on it isn't it because uh, we have to do what god has called us to do people will say good people will say bad but that is not we are responsible for the uh, work which god has called us to do so we must be committed to that so don't let the praises of people or the condemnation of the people pull you down be very strong very strong in the spirit and main thing is committed to the work of god tomorrow if nobody knows our name or nobody appreciates us doesn't matter no because we are accountable to god so that is the attitude which paul and barnabas had and uh, so in lystra all this happened now uh, paul went back into the city with barnabas again they left the city and went to derby now what happens yeah uh in derby they preached the gospel to that city and made many disciples okay so they did some amount of ministry there and then you see that they are going back through the same route so they, where are they going they are going back through lystra through iconium and through antioch why are they doing that so they are making a journey back so that you know, they have an opportunity to strengthen the believers okay strengthening the believers is also the important and i have actually shared that uh, with all of us now let me just see if i can show you just a moment Okay, so yeah. Sorry, class. I thought I'll show you in the next uh, class, but uh, I feel like I should show you right now. just to make things easier so yeah let me just show you i didn't keep it ready now it's ready okay let me know whether you are able to Yeah, are you able to see now? Are you able to see? Yes. Okay. Okay. So now it's quite um, you know easy for us. See Antioch of Syria. I told you, isn't it? Antioch of Syria. Then we said that from there they wanted to travel, so they went through this route. So you have them going to Salamis. and then you have them through cyprus going to paphos and we saw you know the ministry which they did there from there they are continuing perga pamphylia remember we we said they went there mm, and uh, okay where is the other way okay it's showing in more detail over here antioch okay can you see that so they go to antioch and that's where you know they do more ministry in that place and they are expelled right so from there they continue they go to iconium they do the work there and then they have to leave because of the opposition so they decide okay fine to lystra 
right so they've come to listra now and they've done listra and from there you know when uh, things get hard uh, they leave that place they go to darby now darby once they have preached and you know they have raised up a set of believers they want to go back how are they going you know they could have just gone back like this isn't it they could have just uh, gone back either gone through the sea route and then the mm, you know little bit of walk uh, road route and gone back to antioch but you see they just choose to go back the same way because recently people had believed and those people need to be equipped those people need to be strengthened they need to be encouraged so you understand it's so important it's so important for us to remain in touch uh, if possible ourselves or uh, you know maybe have a leader who is in touch with the new believers keep encouraging them keep strengthening them in the lord so the apostles knew the value of that and that is why you see them going back same way so from darby where listra but listra isn't it dangerous for you to go back to listra it is dangerous but uh, they probably to call precautions and they were careful you know not to uh, be noticed by the jews they went they spent time with the believers mainly for the believers this time okay earlier they were preaching to the cities uh, but this time mainly for the believers so again listra again iconium again antioch right again through here you see the arrows you know tell it's showing like this same route they are traveling back to their place back to antioch okay so why are they doing this it seems like you already you know there is a base church and that base church is where they return earlier which was the base church in jerusalem so peter john and all philip they all would go ministry take the report back to the a uh, base church these people are doing the same thing they are their work going back to their base church now there must have been leaders over there. what were they were they doing when paul and uh, barnabas were ministering most likely they were taking care of the believers in antioch continuing to teach continuing to um you know equip the believers and we saw in acts 13 how they were ministering to the lord in prayer and fasting so maybe the believers they continued with prayer and fasting some you know supporting the missionary work of paul and barnabas so successful successfully they have completed one round one trip is over okay so uh, this is what we see uh, as the first journey first missionary journey of paul and barnabas so uh, is it clear everyone are you able to see it well yes okay fine so i thank you have understood so that gives us a good picture now of uh, how exactly that journey went now let's continue yeah so they are going back in that same way strengthening the souls of the disciples so the primary assignment is the disciples so no wonder paul and barnabas are called as apostles right apostles what is one of the roles of the apostolic covenants governance oversight of the churches that they have already established to make sure that the disciples are protected they are nurtured okay that they are growing all the is a responsibility to to, to uh, appoint leaders and good leaders to uh, ensure continuity of the church so even though we don't see now what are all the tasks they did we know and you study the apostolic you understand okay these are all ways in which the apostles would have actually worked and helped the disciples so strengthening the souls of the disciples exhorting them to continue in the faith and saying we must through many tribulations enter the kingdom of god now in the very example which paul and barnabas set for the believers they would have understood that this journey of faith is not easy because till now they are, what have they suffered they have suffered opposition they have suffered uh, uh, mobs 
or people groups rising up against them, accusing them. They have even suffered the extent of uh, being, Paul was stoned. Okay, all that suffering has taken place. So their life itself is an example for the believers. And the believers are, uh, they are encouraging the believers and they're saying, look, there are going to be challenges. Okay, it's not going to be easy to do this to do, do this work to preach the gospel, but through many tribulations, okay, tribulations according to the struggles that one will go through for the sake of the faith and the preaching of the gospel, they say that we must enter the kingdom of God, or that simply means keep experiencing, okay, who God is and what is King all about. When we want to see, you know, Thy kingdom come uh, through tribulations through struggles we may have to go through it so they're just telling them look if you are if you are going through difficulties then it is nothing new because even we have gone through and you have seen our very lives so bringing that word of encouragement to the believers okay so also that apostolic uh, responsibility you see there when they had appointed elders in every church why because governance okay things have to be done well in the churches so they had appointed elders in every church and also notice uh, that there are people who have matured in god to take that responsibility of an elder so what a uh, beautiful work has taken place through the first missionary journey there are some people who are now capable of taking on the role of elders so they are appointing elders in every church I'm sure they would have instructed them and told them, okay, this is the way you must lead the, the uh, times of worship. This is the way you must uh, teach people about living their lives. Okay, This is the way you must teach them you know, about holiness. So many things. So they would have passed on the doctrine to the elders and the leaders and they would have entrusted the leaders to do the same for the people. Okay? Uh, and how did they appoint leaders? They it with fasting so you see that also as a practice which the pastors did or, or the apostles did so they prayed with fasting and they commended them to the lord in whom they had believed um it's like submitting it's like you know like blessing the leader saying okay church here are your leaders pray over them god's power is god's amazing power has been given to them right and then you let them lead the work so they move on there and after they had passed through pisidia they came to pamphylia now uh, when they had preached the word in praga they went down to atalia you saw that map no so they go a little differently they go to a place called atalia also and from there they sailed to antioch so they go back to paphos we saw cyprus uh, one small island no they didn't go they went straight. They sailed back. It's a, it was a sea route. So they sailed back to uh, Antioch, where they had been commended to the grace of God, which they had completed. So now these people have commissioned new elders and new leaders in the new churches. Uh, but at once, you know, the, it was these people, Paul and Barnabas, who were commissioned by the church, by the leaders in Antioch to do the work as missionaries or apostles. So they go back to the uh, base church. And thankfully, you know, they had completed the work of God. But you see here, uh, we are told the grace of God for the work which they had com completed. So uh, what do we need for doing the work of the ministry you know we need god's grace right grace is nothing but supernatural empowering god so we need god's supernatural empowering uh luke knew that that god's work cannot be done in our own strength god's work has to be done in the strength of god and that is saying the grace of god so how did they complete the work through the grace of god was it easy? no even the first journey was not at all easy. And they thought three of them will do. But the so-called assistant, John Mark, what happened to him? He left in the beginning only. So only Paul and Barnabas struggling, going, traveling, 
know, continuing the work which they needed to do. But how did they do it? The grace of God. So we need the grace of God to complete the work of God. So which the work which they had completed, it says. So does it mean that all the work is over? No, because in our lives, uh, one more thing which we have to notice is that uh, you see that that there is the life vision. For example, you know, Paul was called as an apostle to the Gentiles. Uh, in that life vision, you know, you will see God leading us through a journey. And there are assignments. Even in the silent years of Paul, we don't know what assignments God gave him. Maybe he was uh, pastoring a church, who knows, right? So these details we don't know, but we know that there are assignments. So when we read here that the work of God, which they had completed, one assignment is over more assignments to come okay so that is how things are then uh, uh in verse 27 now when they had come and gathered the church together they reported all that god had done with them okay how beautiful you know, there is a body of believers there is a body of elders uh that has commissioned paul and barnabas okay you go they must have been supporting them through prayer and continuing to build the church. Now, when these people come back, what happens? To encourage those who had sent them, uh, they are sharing all the reports. Okay, so they, they're reporting all that they did, Paul and Barnabas did, no, but here it says, reported all that God had done with them and that he had opened the door of faith to the Gentiles. So, some of the key things that are taking place. The works of God and mainly you know, the Gentiles. Remember, Gentiles were the ones who were more open. They were more open in Iconium to listen to uh, the gospel. So they are happy about that. And they're telling the other believers that this is what happened and uh, giving them a good report. So, the, you know, when we uh, talk about missionaries and mission trips, so many things we can learn from here. So when we go on a trip, we come back, what do we do? We can share what God did. We can share, you know, um, all the doors that God opened. We can share, you know, how God built the faith of people when we went and did the ministry. So the report is given back to the church. And then, it says, so they stayed there a long time with the disciples. So it's probable that after the missionary journey, they are back to their teaching responsibility, equipping responsibility. They stay there for a longer time, okay, back in the church of uh, Antioch of Syria. So this is a little bit about the uh, journey so far. Um, yeah, at this point, any thoughts? Anything that you all are wondering about, do you want to just add or highlight something? Then after that, I can go to Acts chapter 15. But you've, you've, uh, you got something from Paul's missionary journey? Okay, so what impressed you the most? Maybe one or two, okay? like what really impacted you in this first journey? Okay, uh, I'm asking to, uh, I'm needing to call people. Uh, yeah, Kiran, do you think you have anything to say? Yes, ma'am. It was like, I'm just thinking about that, like, uh, uh, okay, the people okay. in between, the believers in between, they, they have some, some uh, Jews, some another and another, they, um, they started to like, uh, 
something uh, in between them mm-hmm. but paul is day till paul was like a one part to the different party he was mm-hmm. like sharing the gospel and the good news and mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. he stayed no he stayed for some more time and he shared so that's Mm. So uh I just uh, encourage about uh, everything that we have read and also uh, I'm sure you know some parts of it would have uh particularly you know getting your attention so uh, think about all these things all right so let's uh, continue now uh, we will go to acts chapter 15 this is more about uh, uh, you know a decision which needs to be made so what is happening here uh, we we find that while paul and barnabas were uh, you know um, engaged in all this work there were some men from judea okay, who came and who taught the brethren remember we said we have to be committed to the doctrine of the apostles now there is some teaching some new teaching that people are bringing into the to the church so what are these people from judea saying uh, obviously um, gospel has spread through the entire region believers have been scattered so there are believers everywhere so when we read uh, some places where uh, paul and all will go is already there how are they there paul never went there before maybe somebody has preached the gospel so the gospel is spreading not just through paul and barnabas but even through the lives of other believers so there were some believers in judea and they apparently were teaching the believers now remember we said the doors of the gospel have opened for the gentiles so uh, these people were teaching that composition is very very important even as a practice uh, for the believers so they were saying something like unless you are circumcised according to the custom of moses you cannot be saved so when paul and barnabas heard this uh, they were upset they were angry and you read that they like argued or they fought there was a dispute okay uh, which which took place with such people and uh, they decided that this matter should not be ignored that we are going to take this matter we are going to escalate this matter so uh, in the case of the uh, church uh, the first century church what is escalation of of the issue take it to the other apostles and where are the other apostles they are in jerusalem so paul and barnabas they decided okay let's take this issue how can these these uh, people from dea say that without if you are a gentile and you are not circumcised you can't be saved we have never seen jesus say things like that so they were very angry and upset so they decided they will take this matter to jerusalem and in jerusalem the apostles were there and the elders were also there so um it, it's a very specific question for which they go there okay so they went uh they traveled up it says uh and even while they're traveling up okay they pass through some regions it says uh, phoenicia samaria and uh, describing the conversion of the gentiles and they cause great joy to all the brethren so you know it's um, mm, uh, amazing how you know wherever they are going whichever way they are passing through they are continuing to do the work of the ministry they are continuing to preach the word of god equip the people and it's causing great joy in the lives of the people so even en route they are ministering and they finally come to jerusalem where they had to bring the question before the people and what happens you know when they come to jerusalem they were received by the church and the apostles and the elders and they reported all things that god had done with them so earlier you remember we said paul when he got converted and he wanted to come to jerusalem even the apostles they were not ready to receive him only barnabas was the person who advocated for paul and he brought him but now after years have passed by and uh, people have seen the fruit of salvation in the life of paul okay not just as a believer but also as a minister the earlier passage he's being called what apostle 
acts 14 14 apostle so he has gained that or uh, you could say that um, god has given him that favor he's recognized as a minister of god now so what is the response of the jerusalem church they are welcoming they are accepting of the uh, uh, of paul and barnabas okay and uh, when they go the on paul and paul and barnabas are from antioch so they share about the church they share about you know all the things that have happened in their missionary journey and this will cause the church of jerusalem to actually rejoice in what god has done now when these people came and you know they brought that particular issue isn't it uh, so among the believers there were some who were from the sect of the pharisees now we know the pharisees that uh, you know they were traditional they were very ritualistic okay from background but these people had believed god so uh, hopefully you know they would have they would have learned the the truth of god's word and changed some of their ways but you notice that these people these pharisees also were advocating for circumcision and they said that no 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 it is necessary don't you remember moses had commanded us to be circumcised so uh, why is it an issue if the brethren from judea are teaching about circumcision why can't we just uh, adopt that teaching so you have uh, some sort of an opposition even in jerusalem uh, to this uh, to the matter to paul and barnabas okay so what i'll do is i think i will i will stop here and we will continue in the next class we will uh, go a little deeper in how this matter is dealt with okay so what is the issue here the issue is it's not salvation by faith but it is salvation uh, by faith that people are agreeing but an additional step or you know the work that a gentile believer needed to do was to be circumcised in their body now if they were not circumcised in their body then Uh, they were being told that you cannot be saved your salvation is not complete that is that is the issue but uh, paul and barnabas are very seriously against this matter okay and uh, we will see how they discuss it to with the council here at jerusalem we will call it the council because uh, it's like a decision making body of apostles elders and everybody and now leaders from uh, the church of antioch so we will look into that entire process of decision making in the next session so at this point um yeah okay there's a comment here in the chat message that says interesting to think about paul's transformation of how he was and how god changed him yeah he was a killer and then he became uh, he came to save souls for god's kingdom yeah very true uh, siddharth and it's i mean god's power is able to change and transform lives uh, and uh, paul is a great example you know we we thank god for that so yeah let's uh, uh, close in prayer then uh, and so that you know you could also move on to your next class i would request one of us to please go ahead and pray Uh, Siddharth, are you able to pray? Yeah, I'm sure. Ah, okay. Please go ahead. God bless you. God bless you. Thank you for this day that you've given us. Thank you for helping us to learn on the book of Acts, Lord. God, I just want to pray that you will help us to be like Paul, Lord, and help us to be a people of transformation, Lord God. That we will build your kingdom as Paul did. I pray that you will help us and guide us and bless the next class that we are about to have. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. Amen amen yeah thank you thank you siddharth and thank you class god bless you continue to have a great day we'll meet again in our next session okay bye for now